Hello, everybody. This is Susan Henderson from Disability Rights, Education and Defense Fund. It's nice to see you all. Thanks for joining us as usual. We really appreciate you coming. Um, this week's question and answers on COVID-19. This is our shot, stories from our community um, featuring folks from the independent living movement and independent living centers across California. Our, um, our moderator today is Russell Rawlings from the California Foundation for Independent Living Centers and the DO Network coordinator. Hi, Russell, give a, give a wave. Um, Christine Good morning, Fitz everyone. Christine Fitzgerald, the systems change advocate from the Silicon Valley Independent Living Center. Jamie Good morning. Car Jamie Karen, the community organizer at Community Resources for Independent Living which I believe is Hayward and Khalid Rashid from the community organizing, the community organizing advocate at Disability Resources Agency for Independent Living. Good morning, everyone. So um, thanks for um, joining again. We're only gonna do a cup. We're not, there's no, there's no PowerPoints today. There are going to be some videos along with the sto live stories. Um, and I just wanna go through a couple of slides about accessing Zoom today. Oops. So for access, we have closed captioning. At the bottom of your screen, there is a CC button. If you click on that, captions will appear at the bottom of your screen. Our ASL interpreter today is Tammy. Um, in order to make sure you see Tammy at all times, you can um, make sure you're in gallery view, click the gallery view, the view um, word at the top of the right of your screen. Um, click Tammy's um, video and where the three dots are when you hover over it and select pin video. And then that way you'll make sure you'll always see Tammy. Um, when the slides are showing, you can use the vertical bar to the right of the slides like this, except for there's not going to be very many slides today. Um, and you will be able to see the interpreter's video and better and they'll increase in size as well as our panelists. Um, for Zoom access for everyone, um, there is, hold on, I'm going to let some people in. Sorry about that, hold on, there we go. Um, please keep your mics muted during the presentation and keep your cameras off so we can all easily see the panelists and um, Tammy, the ASL interpreter. Um, questions and answers at the end of the presentations, we'll let, open up the floor, so to speak, so you can ask questions. You can also put them in the chat if you prefer, and we can read them out at the end. So with that, I will end my share screen and it will be up to you, Russell. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to our, this is our shot, town hall. And thank you so much, Susan, for the introductions. Uh, my panelists and I will be having a community conversation but first of all, I just wanted to take a moment to allow all of you to congratulate yourselves for being here. We are at a very important time in the state where more than half of eligible Californians are vaccinated. 52% of Californians are vaccinated who are eligible for, this, for vaccination currently. And our goal is to get everyone to uh, vaccinated who wants to access the vaccine. Um, more importantly, we know that 70% of eligible vaccinated adults is a really important number. Um, and over the course of this month, this uh, wonderful group uh, who are all members of the Disability Organizing Network with myself, and I will be working to do a lot of community education. We're participating in the National Made to Save campaign and many other activities. And if you'd like to join us in our activities, please drop us an email, uh, disabilityorganizing at cfilc 
www.ghostbusters.org. And I'll put that in the chat during our, during our town hall today. And thank you. I also wanna point out that we've been joined by uh, Goldie House from uh, the Disability Action Center in Chico. He is the community organizer uh, or systems change advocate at um, uh, Community Access or Disability Access Center in Chico. All right, thank you all. Uh, I've got several questions for you, but before we lead off, I want to also share one of the videos that this team and the entire D Network, um, we put together a, a collection tool uh, for folks to be able to share a short um, kind of powerful statement sharing why they chose to get their shot and what the experience was like. And we'll highlight a couple of those um, we'll do one now um, from Dr. Michelle Hernandez. Hi, my name is Dr. Michelle Hernandez. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm a resident of Contra Costa County. I'm a middle-aged Latinx female and a wheelchair user. I wanna talk about vaccinations. Right now, that is a crucial need for people in the disabled community to get vaccinated. When I got my first shot, and I must warn you, I'm scared of needles, I was very nervous, but the shot didn't hurt at all. The side effects were minimal. And actually, three weeks later, when I went back, it went faster, and I felt better sooner. So oftentimes, even though we don't have apparent disabilities, we might have other non-apparent disabilities that can compromise our immune systems. So it's crucial that we help our quality of life and we stay safe and healthy so that we can go out there and get vaccinated and be safe to live the independent lifestyles that we all enjoy. So don't forget, it's not scary. You can do it. And I'm afraid of needles and I did it. So get out there and get vaccinated. Thank you. Great, thanks. So now we'll open up um, with some questions and we'll do these just in a round robin style. I'll ask each of our each of our panelists and feel free to contribute um, based on you know, previous responses or, or just allow the questions to kind of guide your conversation. So first of all, what does vaccination mean for our community? And I'll start with, uh, let's start with Jamie. Hello everyone, I'm Jamie again at CREO um, in Hayward Community Resources for Independent Living. And I think what vaccines mean for our community and for me today are um, just keeping yourself safe, keeping everyone you love safe, keeping your community safe. And uh, really it's about um, caring and I think not being selfish and especially um, I feel like because many people with disabilities have pre-existing conditions so I think it's really important for our community to get it and stay safe and as healthy as we can be thank you thanks Jamie what about youth I'll follow up with you since I know that you work with with youth yeah so um I, I feel like it's the same way. At, um, it goes the same way with youth, um, especially because a lot of us are not um, driving it or not able to drive because our disabilities. Um, so we really um, rely on public transportation and um, many of them um, before the um, vaccines came out were very fearful and couldn't go to their jobs, um, their job sites. Um, so now that with the vaccines, they're a little more um, comfortable going out, um, but still taking precautions. Like that's what I always tell them, for example, take 
precautions. That's what I would tell anybody, right? Make sure to wash your hands, sanitize, do what the CDC recommends, because you never know who's vaccinated and who's not yet vaccinated. All right, uh, Kalu, what does vaccination mean for our community? So I had an answer prepared for you, but then with uh, what Jamie said about, you know, taking transportation, public transportation, when we take the vaccine, it's about literally like the community. So like piggybacking on that, the answer is also the bus drivers that have to drive the buses and everything and that are helping the community to support people with disabilities or people that don't have vehicles that to get them around in the community so it's about like being safe and also helping people that are already helping others continue to be safe and not uh you know you know get ill when they're just trying to you know do their job and help the community so i think that's that's where i would go with that Thanks, Kalu. And I know that for you, you've, your family has had some, some pretty uh, intense experience with, with COVID during this time. Do you feel comfortable kind of sharing what vaccination has meant for your family? Um, yeah, I'm totally comfortable talking about it. I literally, um, I brought it to my parents and I was so scared because I brought it into the home and then I got my brother sick and then I got my two parents sick. And I could go on the list of everything that's going on with my parents and the illnesses that we have, but me, myself, I could self-disclose, uh, I had a kidney transplant in, um, 2013 and, or 2010, in 2010, and, um, my brother gave me the kidney, and so I take immunosuppressants. It hit me so hard. Taking the vaccine for me was, like, like a lifesaver because after I got COVID, I didn't want to do nothing. Like I got so scared. I was like, I'm not going to go out anymore. I'm not doing anything. So it really like, it really like, it woke me up because I was like, I can't, I can't put my parents in, in at risk. And, but thankfully I was worse off than my parents were. So, um, but yeah, the vaccine to my parents and us, we felt so comfortable to allow people to come into our homes now. So. Thanks, Khalid. Uh, Goldie, do you, um, what does vaccine vaccination mean for our community? Vaccination. Let me stop. I'm I'm Goldie, Goldie Teahouse in the Disability Action Center in Chico, California. I'm a systems change advocate and quality control specialist at this here in the office. Um, for me, vaccines mean continued health care, continued safety for my neighbors and my providers, and a safe place for me to still get treatment. Um, when it came for, I was, I was nervous, wondering how long it was going to take for disabled individuals to be able to get access to the shots. It created a lot of anxiety. So to sign up for it, we didn't know how it was going to go. I finally was able to sign up for it when we got access to the information and got the first shot. That eased a lot of anxiety at going through our meetings and having these discussions on how we can better prepare our community for taking that first step in joining the vaccination team if they were able to. When I went through, I didn't get have any side effects. Um, little soreness in the shot, shot area. I went back for my second shot. I thought it was, I believed the way they said, oh, we're gonna meet at a fairground. I looked at it, oh, they're just gonna hurt us in like cattle. I had this big negative picture painted in my head. It was nothing like that. I was able to go in, spaced out, get my shot, sat 15 minutes and waited and left. After that second shot, I was just wanting to get back to work, to get back to helping and opening up the community, doing my part to help open up the community and teaching other individuals where and how to get this vaccine if they were able to. That's what the vaccine means to me. It's gonna mean healthy health, healthy opening for our communities, for our economy, for our children, because like it was stated, our children are stuck in an area where 
it's the home front and we have to be that best example and right now the children are only able to move around each other and that creates a say a hot spot so when they were able to open up and give out more shots and knowing that 16 year olds and younger kids were able to get shots that was a big relief a sigh of relief because i worried about the kids you know becoming ill and passing it either to their parents because kids are still hanging out with each other and bringing it going different places having shots in the vaccine gave me a lot of relief but still gave me worry about individuals who are <laughs> unable to take this vaccine with compromised immune systems i am a high risk highly sensitive individual to medications. So I was worried on what the reactions would be to me. Um, when I didn't have the reactions, I, I kind of wondered, where did I get all them false notions? It was from reading all the news. It was from not doing the proper research about what our county is doing, what my county is doing, and who was giving the shots, what shots they were. So I stopped looking at the basic news and started doing my research and talking to people who knew a little bit more about it. And it made me comfortable and more easy, made it easier for me to communicate the needs and the wants of the community who want to know more and are unsure. I think that's about it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Goldie. I know that you and I have had conversations specifically about uh, the low income communities Yes. and communities that are multiply marginalized. And, and I know that that extra work that you've done to, to find those resources is a real source of empowerment. And hopefully folks are able to use a variety of what they feel most comfortable with accepting, you know, as, as information, you know. So that's, yes, that's Russell. really important. And can I say one more thing? Like yeah. you say, keeping it, I live in a, a low income community. So that's where it hits me. You watch these kids and you watch older people. These people don't go nowhere. So any information, I would pass it to my management and they would pass this information out and they would make their own choices. And then it finally moved to where they started passing out vaccines in this complex. They started bringing the information and sharing the information. And they actually, appreciated the fact of the information we were able to share that we've come up with in our toolkit. Thank you. Thank you, Goldie. And that's that's actually a powerful demonstration of of how the ILCs and and community advocates like Goldie can do so much powerful work even outside the disability community in some cases and bring it to uh, an intersectional, truly intersectional approach. Um, Christine. What does vac vaccination mean for our community? It means respect and understanding. Uh, let me give you a really quick example. Um, I got very angry with a friend on uh, Facebook because um, he um, <clears throat> was <clears throat> very dead set against um, even wearing a mask. <laughs> no, that's really not why we're here now. Why we're here now is because of the vaccine itself. The vaccine is going to protect so many people in so many different ways. The probably the biggest way to think of this is um, recognizing that people with um, autoimmune disabilities and breathing problems can't can't get sick. If they do, they're at even higher risk than. Those of us that do not have these conditions. So in order to show our respect and our caring, we should be responsible to get the shot, not just for our own safety, but for the safety of our family and friends. I have many family who have, um, <coughs> pardon me, um, asthma, and we had to have families um, be in two different locations because of this to protect that that one person that could be seriously compromised. So showing your respect and caring of others. 
thank you, Christine. And I know um, for you also um, that the, the IDD community is a community that you speak to. And I would just like to know maybe if, if you think that there's a certain uh, degree of messaging that you think that what does vaccination mean for the IDD community? Certainly, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different issues that go on in the IDD co community, and, and certainly one of them is um, a lot of misunderstandings go on with, the, with how uh, uh, folks either um, perceive the vaccination or even be, be able to be helped to get vaccinated. Certainly trying to help folks understand that it's safe and effective, and it will not harm you. It will do even more to protect you is a, a key factor, but it's it's even more than that. Making sure that the community at large, those that that actually help serve people, also understand this, and that, and that certain community members may need a little bit more time. They may may need privacy, even more so than the average bear. But <clears throat> In the end, the goal is to make sure that that person is safe. Thank you, Christine. All right, let's see. So what can we do to make sure vaccination is accessible for everyone in our community? And I'll start with Kalud. So, oh, um, like, <clears throat> to make it more accessible, I what, think that what do what do we have to do? What can we do to make sure vaccination is accessible for everyone in our community? Um, I would go with how Goldie was saying how he educated the um his the mm -hmm. the complex with about the about it about the the vaccine. I would go also with the ILS is um, the the ILCs knowing where the vaccine clinics are so that this way we could get the word out and let people know. And the more the barrier po posted on our personal accounts, on the ILCs accounts, like social media, like use social media on any, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, just everywhere. And then just mass text message it even, you know, or make phone calls, let people know that the vaccine, where the vaccine clinics are. And honestly, make sure that they're, um, the drive-through kind also, so that this way anybody could go through, whether with a disability or not, so that this way, because I did, when I, when we saw, we had a drive-through uh, vaccine clinic here, and people were coming in with their buses, and, and it was all, like, we had all different kinds of people coming in, so th that's what I would say, is just get the word out, and us also doing our research, because sometimes my turn, it's a great website. It's very, very, it's, it's an amazing website. The thing is, is because so many people are using it, it just gets, it, it goes down. So we need to have that information also, like where we know where they're at too. So that this way, when people call us and my turn is down, we'll still have the information. Also, thank you, Kalud. I know that um, my turn doesn't necessarily suit the needs of everyone either. Um, I know that you were contacted by a consumer in the Copperopolis area who was seeking a specific uh, vaccine. Could you share a little bit about um, uh, about how you assisted and how how that process worked for you? For me, when when the consumer called, I, I called the consumer directly and because you had emailed me and let me know that the consumer was looking for a certain type of vaccine. And when I looked it up on my turn, there was no appointments available for us to book the appointment. But I saw the address on the side of the place that it's, it was available. So I Googled the phone number of that pharmacy. And then from there, I, I, I spoke with the pharmacy directly. And I said like, hey, there, this is what's going on on my turn. Do you guys have, is it available over there? And if it's not, if it is, is are you guys accepting appointments? Because it's not, I'm not able to book an appointment on my turn. And they were able to book it over the phone for him. So that was like, you know, like we, 
sometimes you have to go a little bit extra, just you know, do an extra step or two, but it's worth it because this person was looking for this vaccine for quite a while and you know, they found and we found it for them. So, and they were able to go. So it was really, it, I was really, really happy that we were able to find it, but sometimes my turn, yeah. But the, I will give them credit. They had the address. So I Googled the address. So yeah, yeah. so that was, that helped a lot. So we'll give them credit. Thank you, Kalud. That's, that's really great. And that's, so uh, for those who may be less familiar with independent living centers, this is really the support and, um, ability that many advocates and organizers have at these ILCs to help you navigate the process. So if there's a, if you're unsure about how to receive a vaccine, or maybe in the case of this one individual, they really wanted the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because they were concerned about having to go through side effects sí, twice. Um, it was... Sorry, was that an announcement from our interpreter? So sorry, I had an issue with Wi-Fi. Just one second. Susan, can you assign me as an interpreter again? I did. You should be there. Thank you. I don't Thanks. see it. Are we? I'm sorry, I don't see it. I saw a message saying that interpretation had ended. One moment, folks, my apologies. One moment, I'm so sorry. Oh, here it is, thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Um, next, I will move to uh, Jamie. What can we do to make sure vaccination is accessible for everyone in our community? Um, well, I would say similarly to what Kalud said. Um, so I think more, maybe more trainings and webinars would be helpful on this topic too, like creating a PowerPoint, um, just educating the community more. Cause I feel like um, not a lot of people like know where to get it. And um, I heard a lot of people like, because the news can be very triggering for some at times and scary and like negative nowadays. Um, so I don't think, um, while people still watch the news, um, I don't hear of them watching news every day. Um, so other sources um, could be good, like pushing it on media and also getting involved with the independent living centers and the DO network. Um, I think that's really good for people and people with disabilities, especially to know. Um, so I would say um, that, um, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Community is definitely key for access. Um, Christine. So, okay, okay, hey, that's you got, okay. So um, on top of that, on top of what has already been mentioned, making sure that whatever messaging we're, we are doing is completely a wraparound in um, accessibility. So making sure that the closed captioning is active, making sure that live transcript is there, making sure that ASL interpretation is there. And we need to recognize that ASL is an Amer is a state recognized language. Also, um, whatever you do in media, um, uh, not so much printed material, but anything you do on the internet, um, let's make it fully accessible for those with visual disabilities. So making sure that the alt text is there, making sure that screen readers can read it, one of the best ways to do that is to turn on <clears throat> turn on the screen reading software and get used to I using it first of all for yourself. Am I going too fast? Oh no, you're fine. Okay, you're fine. <clears throat> and, and I'll finish up here and say, you know, just making sure that that you learn how to use the software, learn how to use how it works and then making sure it works for others. 
So we're getting feedback from those that actually use it. Great, thank Maybe you. Christine. Accessibility is uh, our, the accessibility of communication is also how we make the vaccination accessible. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And Goldie, what can we do to make sure vaccination is accessible for everyone? I know you hit a little bit on this on the on the getting it into the community, but oh, Goldie, you're on. And the tail end of your comment, communication is the biggest thing. Wherever our county is, find out who, what your county vac station is doing. Communicate our needs from the individuals that we serve. As we say, our ILCs, we're basically a hub for individuals with disabilities seen and unseen. We help individuals get guided. So we need to educate ourselves and figure out who is getting this information and who's giving this information out, not just wait until the last minute till we get it. Whoever is pa passing out that information, we need to share our community and our demographics needs, express that to them. And when they're making these flyers, ask them to bring them to our site so that to our ILCs so that we can help them help the community. Because the, our counties and our cities is asking us to make sure that we do this. But they don't know, most counties and cities don't follow federal regulations of ADA. So printing, texting, coloring is very important and needs to be accessible to everyone in different areas. Communication is very key and how it's communicated. Just putting it on a social media commercial, yeah. not everybody has TVs, not everybody watches the news. The flyers that we get and we've seen around Small print, probably one big color. Some people are colorblind. We need to advocate as we do to our vaccine coalitions on what our clients use, need, and should be deemable as accessible. And when they set up their sites, is this, we ask these, this, our, our coordinators, are the sites accessible? Are you meeting these, these, these ramifications? If, so when our clients ask us, here's a better site that you can go to. And to one to what Khalud was saying, I, my thing with my turn, I was trying to register with my turn. The operator in turn couldn't help me, told me that there was no vaccines and no vaccine sites available. In turn, I did what Khalud did. I looked for an address in the near site area of my options and choices went back into my turn with my, the knowledge that I picked up and tried it again and found it. And that goes from taking the information that we learn what's right and wrong. And as we are ILCs and advocates for our community, we have to make sure that, how do I say this? Well, so can I when our community is asking, we gotta be able to tell them where to get the interpreted information when they call us and say, our county is, I can't understand what they're saying to us. And when our county isn't becoming accountable for it, who do we go to? Back to the coalition. Thanks. That's Goldie. the best way that I can see it. Thank you. Thanks, Goldie. Um, we are down to just our last um, five minutes. I want to ask very quickly, is there anything from the uh, the attendees, any questions that folks would like answered? Hello, my name is Shay. Um, hi, Jamie, nice to see you. Um, what? Hi, Shay. Would you, what? Uh, this, this is a question for the whole panel, by the way. What would you say to, to someone who because I was, I was hoping a consumer yesterday, I'll just come out with it. I was hoping a consumer yesterday and she was telling me that she missed her appointment for her second dose. And it had been over a month and I had to, um, because she was telling me she couldn't get to her appointment because the bus that she usually takes wasn't running at that time. 
so she missed her appointment, I specifically said to just call back her provider and see if they could help her reschedule the appointment. But what do I say to someone who's missed their appointment and has not had it for over like a month? Thank you, Shay. Uh, that's a really great question. I think that probably is going to start coming up fairly frequently. My personal advice would be that they contact their medical provider, um, a doctor or a, a medical professional first, get advisement from that source. That would be my personal recommendation. Um, and also don't stress. Um, every dose of the vaccination provides some level of immunity. Um, having one dose is better than having none. And talking to that medical provider about options is the best course of action, I would say. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for bringing up that question. That's a great question. I was just baffled <laughs> when, yeah. I was, when I was helping her because I'm like, yeah. how is it that she hasn't had this vaccination yet and it's been over a month? Yeah. I mean, that's definitely, I, I think there's a couple of things to do, right? Like, first of all, encourage and support the person to, to have a conversation with a medical professional. Let them know that there is already a degree of, you know, even one dose is some protection. And then following that up with, if there was like a failing of a system, which it sounds like maybe there was, that figuring out where that system failed to. And, and Shay, I would maybe encourage you to to connect with the um, advocate or organizer at the ILC that you're near. Um, if they're here with us, of course. I actually connect. work with Jamie. <laughs> you work with Jamie. Okay, yes. great. So that's, uh, that's actually really great. I think maybe following the conversation also with figuring out where there was a failure would also be really important and make sure that the county and the city or whoever the responsible party was, all actually the county, and whoever the provider of, of the vaccination was is, Russell. is aware that that happened. Um, Christine, go ahead. We are down to just our last three minutes. So. I'm just gonna do it really quick and, and yep. put it out there that for those that need vaccines um, in their homes to contact the mm -hmm. county and let them know that you need a vaccine at your house. The independent living centers can also assist with this. Mm -hmm. But let's make sure that those that need um, in-home support, so to speak, uh, get it. Yep, same. And that actually is, that's, thank you, Christine. That's a really good point to bring up. The My Turn website also does have the ability for you to indicate if you need transportation assistance or at-home vaccination. So the, those options are now on the My Turn website. We've confirmed that you will get a follow-up call you won't, you won't get any information right when you finish registering, but you will get a follow-up call within a couple of business days. So just wait for that call, um, answer it, and ask all the questions and, and make sure that you, uh, you know, really advocate for pushing for that at-home vaccination and also uh, transportation mm -hmm. resources if you need it. Um, thank you, Christine. That's, that's definitely, I think, something that we all need to be aware of. And absolutely, if you're really like wanting support, connect with your local independent living center. It's such a powerful resource. And if you can't find your local ILC easily, um, drop us an email at the email address that we uh, put in the chat earlier, disabilityorganizing at cfilc.org. I wanna thank our panelists. This time went by so quickly. We could have probably had a two hour conversation or a three hour conversation easily. Um, but thank you all. Um, I will, um, I would like to play one more video for us as, as we leave this space today, this, uh, this video, which is part of the Crips, Crip Back Stories video uh, campaign also, um, is from uh, a member of our community who is a youth and was able to get vaccinated the day that um, expansion happened to under 12 uh, populations. So, um, if we could, I'd like to see this, uh, this video from Hi. One moment while we queue up that video.
um russell i don't know yeah yeah yes go ahead Jamie. but it's in there i remember being on a call and you mentioned there was um an option um to choose if you want your first or second dose on my turn now is that right that's correct it, it asks you if this is your first dose and it oh yeah, it just asks the question if this is your first dose, and then if not, then it knows it's your second. Right? So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, it looks like unfortunately we're having some technical difficulties with the video, but I wanted to um, thank everyone who has been here. Russell, um, I'm just, getting it up. I'm okay, getting it up. Great. Excuse great. me. Yeah, it's high, okay. correct? Yes. Okay, one moment. Thank you for bearing with me. Thanks. It's really, it's also really great to see folks from across the country here today. Thank you for sitting in with us. What made me get the vaccine was that I could see more friends and I could travel. And what was it like when you got it yesterday? Uh, what it was like was that it wasn't that busy and the lines went really quick. We just had to fill out some paperwork and we got the shot. And how have you felt? since yesterday um i was kind of dizzy and my arm still hurts from it but yeah okay and what support suggestions you'd like to share with others who aren't sure if they want to get it uh i think um if you're not sure about getting it you should because if you do get it then you could tr travel and like don't have to wear these masks anymore great thank you for your time well thank you everyone and um i also want to let everyone know that uh, the state of California has also uh, announced that now as vaccinated folks, you can be a winner in a uh, randomly drawn lottery. The first group of 15 was announced today for a $50,000 prize. So um, go to uh, the state's website, uh, covid.ca.gov, and you can find the Vax for the Win campaign there. Thank you all. And uh, please join us next week at, uh, on the 11th at this same time at noon. We will be having a pediatrician who will be sharing some medical uh, advice for the community, uh, for especially geared at youth. So thank you all. And um, we will see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you.